So I'll just get straight to the question that probably a lot of people after watching Four Corners the other night might be asking. Is, is the JSF a flying lemon? You know, I, I look to the great air forces. So when, when you see the U.S. Air Force, the U.S. Navy, the U.S. Marine Corps, when you see Israel and Japan and, and seven other countries and eight partners do a detailed analysis of what will be their next generation fighter and they all come to the conclusion that it's the F-35, that gives me confidence that this is the right plane at the right time with the right capability. There always will be critics. Um, but really, I defer to the experts, and, and each one of, of those experts continues to choose F-35. Um, on, on this issue of concurrency, the, why was the airplane put into such high production before uh, appropriate tests were done? We've actually reduced the concurrency. We've pulled over a thousand airplanes out of the profile, and there have been delays to, to the development program. That, that has been acknowledged. But we removed airplanes, reduced the cost of concurrency, and now the Joint Program Office says that over the next few LRIPs, there is a significant decrease in the cost of concurrency. And this is tribute to the performance of the airplane and the risk reduction and how the airplane has performed in terms of its durability tests, its static test, and its flight test. And again, as progress continues, and we're confident and optimistic uh, uh, that it will, we'll see that, that concurrency cost continue to decrease. Now, there's been uh, a lot of different conflicting reports about what the final cost to Australia is per plane is going to be upwards of $200 million in some. What is the actual final cost? You know, you, again, I don't, I don't want to be disingenuous. You, you need to, to talk. Cost can be a significantly difficult uh, uh, challenge to understand. So what I talk about is the unit price of the airplane. That's the engine, that's all the mission systems equipment, uh, and it's the airframe that, that you have. And that, what the U.S. government estimate shows, is in 2020 deliveries is about $67 million. Why are we confident we're able to do that? Because the first five years of, of production, we've signed contracts and fixed price contracts now uh, upwards of 13 percent below that number. There are additional costs, we must acknowledge, for spare parts, for gas, for, for training simulators and others. But when we're talking about the airplane, the engine, and all the mission systems of a combat airplane, it's about $67 million. And how does that compare to, um, say, the F-18 when it was the new aircraft? Um, when it, when it well, you can, you can look through the, 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 the different uh, sales and figures that are public records out there, and the F-16 has been the most successful fighter of all time. And we know what that costs, and F-35 compares favorably to that in an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. Because those other fighters don't include targeting systems, electronic warfare systems, fuel tanks, and the pylons that go with it, they're all, all part of the combat system that is F-35. There are generally additional costs of these fourth generation airplanes. And in that time frame, because of the economies of scale, because of 200 airplanes a year, because of a moving assembly line in Fort Worth, we're able to decrease that F-35 to less of any of those other fourth generation airplanes. Now, I'm right in understanding that um, there are uh, some of these aircraft in service already with the Marine Corps. That's right, isn't it? That's correct. So Marine, the first operational base at Marine Corps Air Station Yuma in Arizona has been so stood up. They're currently flying operations today. We have Eglin Air Force Base, which is a training base with 22 airplanes that are currently flying today. Uh, we delivered 30 airplanes in, in 2012. We'll deliver 36 airplanes. We'll stand up Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada this year, and we'll add more jets to Eglin Air Force Base in Florida as well as to Marine Corps Air Station Yuma. So the, the rate of flight tests, the rate of operations is expanding and the production is expanding. And how are these um, operational craft faring in, uh, in military training against fourth generation aircraft? You really need to ask the pilots. And, and, and really, when I ask them, they, they really don't have a comparison between fourth generation and fifth generation airplanes. It, it, it's quite simple. You know, you see them before they see you. You're able to get a first shot, first kill, and, and time out before those airplanes even know you're there. That's the stealth. That's the next generation sensors. That's the sensor fusion that comes with an F-35. And we're already seeing it demonstrated in the fighters today. Um, and maybe just finally, um, how, how, is, how is the X-35 likely to fare when you have um, 
the, the rise of pilotless aircraft like the X-47B, for instance, which is, operates a similar sort of capability strike fighter bomber, but doesn't have a pilot, is, is, is it possible that the F-35 may have a shorter lifespan as, as these sort of pilotless drones become more and more useful? Well, that's constantly a debate that you see out there. What, what I look at is what, what does an F-35 or, or a, a fighter airplane do for a country? It provides security. It, it provides interoperability, coalition building that's out there, and, and, and other things. What what really is a weakness of these UAVs is the data links they go with. So when I talk to the chiefs of air forces of many countries, are they willing to put the backbone of their national defense infrastructure at risk if only their data links are, are, are jammed? And, and that's a big risk um, that they're willing to take. And, and, and what I hear about from those, those different chiefs are they're not willing to do that. What F-35 brings it is really that ability in a dynamic environment for the man in the loop to continue to be there. Unmanned vehicles are really not unmanned. There are a lot of manning, and in a lot of cases, a lot of cost associated with it. They're really uninhabited vehicles. Uh, what F-35 brings is the ability to upgrade the technology to continue to advance and that reduction of risk that comes with uh, the data links in, in UAVs. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.